Hello and welcome of course to another tune set up in Gran Turismo 7 and this time it's another circuit build and for those who are unfamiliar with my circuit builds for the majority of these at least that I've done so far what I like to do is more so give you a backbone to work from so I don't tell you every single part that you should fit because that's down to you. The way the performance points work, the way the classes work in this game, you know, from the lowest possible points to the highest possible for different events, both on and offline, it just doesn't make sense really for me to make a, a PP specific tune because it's far too restrictive. So instead of that, what I do is take a car, such as the ones you can see here on the lap times, and then compare a stock version to a lightly, extremely lightly modified version, but at the same time, it doesn't just make those cars that little bit quicker, using only the diff and the suspension and nothing else. But crucially, it gives you that backbone, that scaffolding to work with, so that if you then do increase the power and drop the weight, etc., you can use this same underlying method to then work with that and make the car that much more controlled. So it's a beginner setup, but with the purpose of being able to really extreme tune the car if you desire. So with that in mind, this time we're tuning, of course, the Nissan Z Performance, as they call it in the game. I believe the 400Z is as most of us call it in real life. Now, as far as the performance point difference, I believe stock it's running somewhere around the 530 region. Now it's running, as you can see, about 551. So if you want to get it, for instance, into like the 550 PP level, you can just reduce the power a little bit by the you know power restriction or that kind of thing, or of course increase the power more if you want to. Now we're still running sports hard tyres, which is stock. The suspension and diff are, as I've said, all we've done. So as far as the actual tuning, as you can see, we've dropped the ride height to 90 millimetres on the front and the rear. You may want to do some conversion on Google if you're not using millimetres, etc., or you can go into the main menu settings and alter your units of measurement if you prefer. For the anti-roll, I've left that on four, which is quite uh, a big difference already over the one that it naturally has with the stock suspension. We've in increased the compression on the dampers to 38 for the front and the rear, reduced the back a little bit to 42 for the expansion. Well, uh, not just the back, but the front as well, I should say. For the frequency, we've increased that to 2.1 and 2.25 respectively. The camber is neutral which I'm doing more and more in this game because I'm finding that for most of these cars you don't need too much camber really, which is a nice change. They're already pretty stable for the most part. I've reduced the rear toe angle to neutral as well, so you're not dragging those tyres. As I've said before, I'm not a huge fan of using toe on my setups. Some people like it. If you want to give it a try, go for it. I just personally prefer to use stuff like the diff and the camber rather than toe. And then as far as that diff, I've gone for a fairly simple approach of halfway on initial torque, 30, then 40 for acceleration and 20 for braking. Now I will say, as with many of these kind of bare bones circuit tutorials, this is designed to make the car a little heavier through corners. Not slower, but heavier. So it has more understeer than oversteer. The reason why I do that is because, as I've said before, I believe it's much easier to work with, plan for, and counteract understeer than it is oversteer. For example, would you rather work with a car that's consistently heavy, or would you rather work with a car that just suddenly snaps and spins for no apparent reason? That's the approach that I take. So that's it for the setup, though. Now, of course, what we need to see is that lap time that you saw earlier on in practice to see what kind of difference this actually makes, not just to a raw lap time, but how the car composes itself, its poise, its control, and how pleasant or lack thereof, in you know certain cases, the car may be to work with. So in the case of this particular Nissan, much like the Dodge Viper tune which I did, it's actually already quite a good car to work with. And for a 2023 sports car, you would kind of hope so. Plus, of course, it's Nissan, although Toyota has the good relationship with Gran Turismo, Nissan always has as well, so of course the car's gonna feel good. In terms of the lap time difference, I will definitely say you could certainly use the tune that I've done here to go quicker than I did. Even my second lap that I began was gonna be about a, at least another half a second quicker than this one, but then I made a stupid mistake and just gave up, basically, because even the lap that I did here is already half a second quicker, so it shows the kind of difference it can make. So in other words, you're looking at about half a second to a second quicker than stock, which again, given that the power and torque and weight are completely untouched, 
Even the tyres are untouched, with no driving aids, of course, apart from ABS, which I personally like. It gives you a rough idea of the kind of improvement it can give you. The main difference that you'll find if you use this tune compared to the stock handling is that the stock car feels quite soft. Again, similar to the Viper, it wallows around quite a lot, it feels a bit soft and... It, I mean, it feels comfortable, <laughs> I would probably put it that way. It feels very forgiving, but it feels a bit mushy through corners. This one is much tighter, much more taut, much more composed, and especially if you decide to really pile on the power in terms of upgrades and drop the weight, this is going to give you a much better basis to work from than the stock suspension will. So if you do decide to use it, I hope you have a ton of fun with it. If you do find certain other vehicles like the Viper, like the 911, difficult to tune, then I would recommend, of course, checking out my setups for those, because many people have found those very helpful already. And of course, I will be doing more like this on the channel as well. So overall, it's a good car to work with. This tune, I would say, makes it even better in terms of being competitive rather than just fun. And until next time, I will see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.